Hello, today for our terrain breakdown I have this rocky valley which I made for uh, practice. It has the usual two graphs, one for the shape and the other one for the textures. So let's start from the shape as usual. And for this terrain I started out with a pearly node. As you can see here I modified the parameters a little bit, mainly the scale as well as the octaves. The scale because I wanted the details to be more sparse and uh, the octaves I reduced them from I think the default is 12 or something like that. I reduced them to 8 so mm, the details are not so strong. We also have the warp frequency and amplitude. This defines the noise of our uh, terrain. I simply modified until I found something I liked. I also changed the seed a little bit and we, ha and we have this kind of result here. By default it is higher so I use the clamp node in the post process here on the bottom right and reduce the clamp maximum so the terrain is lower. I then connected a shaper node here as you, as you can see with the shaper and out. I use the local effect to maintain some of the details and simply reduce the shape to have some kind of depression. Then I added a world node. And here I want to talk about what I call the world stretched technique. Now it's not that I invented it, just that I like to call it uh, by that name. Well, this technique simply is useful for uh, creating uh, valleys, depression and uh, open areas in your terrain. If you take a look at the shaper, this is before the wall. As you can see there are a lot of hiked uh, places, um, almost mountains, right? After the wall we have this nice open area. Now you can modify the parameters to have even more space here. Now I won't do it because uh, I already built the terrain at 2k. If I change the parameters it will rebuild everything. I will make a video about this technique here. But uh, with the wall set to a lower amount, so 3 is a minimum, so we it doesn't create those uh, circular uh, patterns in your terrain. And uh, by changing the power and the type to stretch as well as the seed until you find something that you like, you can get uh, nice valley looking terrains or open areas. For example, here it's not the case, but here you may have some kind of valley and here all mountains with this technique. After that, uh, I create a worse lens node. This second graph here is uh, merely for adding details. So the worse lens is very good for this kind of stuff. As you can see, we have a lot going on here. I simply change the scale, leave the structures too large. So have, we have big formations. If uh, your goal is to create um, like floor or a floor or uh, maybe a grassy land, then uh, you can change it to small, but not in this case. I also bump up the chaos. I added a warp this place just to add some details. I only change the strength, the set to high quality. I then added a combine node set to subtract. So we have this middle area with uh, open space and I use a gradient, a very simple linear gradient set to 2 as a scale. By changing the scale you simply change the inclination and uh, this is the final result. Then another combine, this time uh, set to min to get some of the older details back, uh, mainly here and here, left and right, ratio so to 70%. And I connected it basically the first input to the previous combined node and the second input to my second graph, which uh, as I said before, it's for the details. Then I added a fold, default settings, and we have this nice mountains as well as some rocky formations here and here. Then I used two erosion nodes. 
the first erosion is set to slope bias 85 uh, as a preset so as you can see we have uh, all uh, these uh, rocks uh, flowing down as well as uh, the peaks that are eroded the second erosion I set it to strong channels to have this effect here uh, so basically soil deposits that flow down to our valley then I combine the two erosion nodes using the mean method so usually when you combine erosion nodes you use the mean or max method sometimes even the subtract but if you want a mix of details between the two you usually either use mean max or even blend in this case i use the mean to 100 percent and this is the final result and finally an alluvium node which simply adds residual deposits dirt or uh, sand it depends you can also use it for snow but for snow it's a bit uh, more complicated maybe in the future i will make a video about it and i think uh, I, yes i already changed the amount of 50 percent so i lowered it because i didn't want so much of um, dirt on uh, our mountains and uh, the setting i set it to seven instead of three i think so we have more deposits of uh, rocky soil at the base of our mountains i also enable the drop to floor simply because uh, if you want to export your terrain it's better if it's aligned to the grid okay this is it for our shape let's go to the texture graph for our texture graph as a mask i used the texture the slope the rock map and the flow okay so let's start with the base color for our terrain Texture node, default settings, connected to stat maps. I simply search for a color that I liked. For this second stat map, same process. However, I wanted some bright rocks. So I choose a gradient that reflect that. I mixed the two together with the min method. For the method, as I always say, you should practically practically experiment with every method because uh, every time is different usually max mean and uh, blend they are the ones that uh, in 70 percent of the cases are always good but as i always say it depends we have this kind of result here a mix uh, with uh, bright rocks uh, and uh, this uh, dirt coloration then i added another sat map i wanted to color the, the slope of our mountains with a reddish color so I chose this sat map here and uh, mixed it so I mixed it with uh, the previous mixer and uh, use the slope as a mask these are the slope settings default nothing changed uh, I set it to blend 100% usually when you use the slope mask you always use blend because you want the color after that I place another mixer and I created a sat map I started uh, planning out how I wanted to the rocks to um, appear I choose this bluish color a lot of times if you take a sat map alone like this one it doesn't make sense right because it is unrealistic however when you mix it with other maps and especially different uh, mixing methods and mask then you obtain very nice results so if you take a look here i use the max method to keep the brightest colors and uh, i used the rock map as a mask the rock map by default uh, uh, is like this okay inverted with these settings if you take a look here we have almost these squares that doesn't really look good if you use it as it, on its own you will get those squares that uh, yeah they suck 
so I always add a blur node to soften up everything. I set it to 0 0.1, which is the minimum. Actually, the minimum is 0, but 0 is useless, so I use 0 0.1. And now we have this result here, which uh, um, it can also be used as a map on its own, I think. I mean, if you are doing some fantasy stuff, with some tweaking it's uh, it can be good but in any case i also added an invert node because with rock map i always tend to use both of the mask um, here we have the wet areas going on the slopes of our rocks and in the previous one we have uh, obviously the contrary so the wet areas are on the flattened areas so i use this one and plug it into the mask of our mixer and this is the result we have some bluish colors going around here then another mixer this time i use a different sat map i choose a very bright sat map because i wanted the rocks to pop up in fact this is the previous result and this is the with the new mixer using the divide method which brighten up all those regions defined by our rock map. I use the inverted one this time. Okay, so this is something that uh, I always do, at least uh, recently. I discovered it that uh, make the terrain more realistic. You practically plug a mixer with the same set map and the same mask that you used before. So a copy of the previous mixer, but instead of using the divide method you use the multiply so this is the it is with the divide and this is with the multiply it darken some areas of your terrains and it makes it more realistic you can also use the power if you want sometimes i use it but the power method is very well powerful no pun intended and um, so yeah Try, I usually use the multiply or the power, but you can try different things. Finally, this is the, is the mixer for the flow. Our flow here, I use the quaternary. I rarely use it, but in this case, it produces good results. It takes into consideration all the flowing of our terrains. The quaternary are the smallest one, while the primary are the biggest so this is the final result with the flow this is the previous one this is the new one you have way more contrast in uh, those flowing areas and uh, it makes the terrains uh, looks better as well as less chaotic and then some color correction and there we go some people don't do it but if you want my advice always do it it doesn't matter what you do, a model, an environment, a terrain, a material, doesn't matter. Always uh, do a color correction pass because it brings out the colors and uh, it makes them full of life. I mean, this looks good, but it is lacking. You can see it's lacking something. After the color correction, it's all better. I simply change the contrast the hue so we have more reddish going on and uh, some la some um, luminosity here or likeness as the guy i call it and equalization two percent just to avoid any kind of pixel artifact i don't have them here thankfully otherwise you need to lower down the contrast okay so this is the end of our terrain breakdown i hope you enjoyed it if that's the case leave a like to support the channel Subscribe to stay up to date with the latest contents. If you have any questions, comment below. And I'll see you in the next one. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire. But it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light.